everyone. Ranger William here from the Overmountain Victory National Historic Trail. Now, as part of the mission of the trail, to share the story of the Overmountain men and the participants at the Battle of Kings Mountain, both on their way to and from that pivotal American Revolution battle. I'm here today at historic Bethabra Park in what's now Winston-Salem, North Carolina, to share a part of the story of the aftermath of the Battle of Kings Mountain. How these Patriot victors and their resulting over 700 Loyalist prisoners affected this small town here. A town of the United Brethren or the Moravian Church in North Carolina. This is going to be part one of our series entitled Protected Us From All Harm. Now in the aftermath of the Battle of Kings Mountain, what you saw are a colonists and colonists fighting against each other at that battle. You had those who were patriots in favor of the American Congress, and you had those who were loyalists in favor of the British government. And now that the battle is done, this resounding patriot victory, what are the patriots supposed to do with these prisoners? Over 700, some of whom are pretty severely wounded. Now we have notes here that William Campbell, the elected commander of this force of over mountain men, he decides that they're going to be brought until they can get further direction, they're going to be brought here, the Moravian towns, uh, also known as Wachovia in the 18th century. This is a community of the Church of the United Brethren, or the Moravian Church, settled here in North Carolina in 1753. Now, the community here are pacifists, so it's believed by William Campbell and the other patriots here from around the Yadkin Valley area that this will be a safe place to hold this many prisoners until they can get guidance from General Horatio Gates of the Continental Army about where to send or what to do with this many prisoners of war. Now, the Patriot Army arrives here on October 22nd and 23rd, 1780. You're looking at about 16 days after the Battle of Kings Mountain, in which this army and their prisoners have covered about 182 miles from Kings Mountain National Military Park, following, kind of retracing their route back up to Quaker Meadows on the banks of the Catawba River, before heading this way to the Yadkin Valley region. On October 23rd, 1780, the town diary notes that here at Bethabra, about five to six hundred men arrived with little to no advance notice. Some accounts say that day they heard these men were arriving. Other accounts say they only had about one day's advance notice. In that time, they have had to prepare a massive amount of food supplies to try and feed this mass of men and horses, but also find a place for them to stay. Now, throughout this occupation of this Patriot Army and their Loyalist prisoners, you're going to see the townspeople here of Bethabra reach out to not only some surrounding area farms for assistance, but also their sister towns of Bethania and Salem. They're going to reach out for not only for food and supplies, but also manpower to help relieve what they call the distressing conditions here. Now, by the time the Loyalist prisoners have arrived here at Bethabra, their numbers have dropped greatly. Uh, this is due to a combination of escapes, uh, a few murders by Patriot guards, but also you have the local Loyalists, especially the North Carolina Loyalists, being turned over to civil authorities for trial and punishment, treated more as criminals than as uh, enemy soldiers. Now, what you're left with is roughly about 300 Loyalist prisoners, a combination of the Loyalist militia and the provincials that have been serving with and trained by Patrick Ferguson. Now what you see here behind me, this more cleared open space here at Historic Bethabra, includes a fenced pasture and a garden, representative of the gardens that were here at Bethabra. One of the main reasons the Patriots think this is a good place to house this army, the abundant foodstuffs. Now this garden um, is still managed today as a community garden, so you may be able to see and hear some of the work going on there behind me. Now, it's recorded that when the uh, Moravians hear about this large number of people and horses that are on their way, they clear the large 10-acre meadow. This is going to be a combination of corn as well as some hogs. They clear this area to make room for the Patriot Army. Now, the Loyalists are going to be divided not only by their rank, but by their style of service, provincials 
versus militia. The militia are going to be kept kind of in this fenced pen area, while the loyalist provincials and their officers are going to be housed in some of the local homes. Now the provincials, when they're housed in homes here in Bathabra, they're going to be divided by rank. Like you can see here behind them, this nice log home with the mud chinking in between. This is going to be an example of the single brother's home. This is where you're going to have the enlisted men housed during their stay here in Bathabra. The officers are recorded as being placed in other family homes. Now the provincials here may not be as guarded as the loyalist militia who are being kept in the fence pasture. That is because their commander, Captain Abraham de Peister, the default leader of these men with the death of Major Patrick Ferguson, it is said that he actually gave his word for the good conduct of the provincials while they are here in town. Um, he actually receives permission for a few of his officers to travel around town without being under guard, and sometimes they even journey over to the town of Salem, under guard of course, before being allowed to come back. Now I'm here next to a recreation of an earthen bread oven. This is going to be the kind of 18th century technology used to make bread at large uh, farms, towns, and here at Bethabra. Now we're going to talk a little bit about food. When you have this army of men and horses to send upon uh, Bethabra, they are very close to starving. Um, these men over the past 30 days and approximately 400 miles have been surviving with what little food they can find along the way, either foraging in the woods, finding at different farms they pass, or maybe a few beef cattle they can drive for short distances of their journey. Now, once they arrive here at Pythabra, they start to send out foraging parties, trying to gather things from local farms, uh, local plantations, but those are quickly exhausted. Now, nearby farmers are also bringing in supplies. Cattle, apples, other kinds of foodstuffs are being brought in, hoping that by willingly providing this hungry army and their horses, this will keep the army from reaching out and taking more from their farms. Now, one foodstuff that's going to be very tight is going to be flour and bread. It's talked about here. It says that the Bethabra bakers actually request extra guards to be posted at the bakery, trying to keep the crowds of hungry men from pressing in on them and keeping them from being able to work. Now, for several days, Bethabra records that they could not bake at all, especially not for themselves, much less their guests, because they were simply without flour. They had exhausted the supply. Additional guards are going to be placed at the storehouse where other food is going to be kept, trying to keep the hungry soldiers from taking food and flour without permission. And these men are exhausted, hungry, and tired of practicing restraint. So that's going to be part one of our series, Protected Us From All Harm, talking about the Moravians, Bethabra, and the aftermath of the Battle of Kings Mountain. So I hope you learned a little bit, I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for part two and three where we talk a little bit more about the stay of the Kings Mountain Patriots and their prisoners here at historic Bethabra Park.